Hey, it's Joseph here. My voice is not 100% back from the flu that I had, so please bear with me as I go through this video. And you are actually here to hear about virtual tour workflows. Creating a virtual tour would be quite useful for people who's looking to sell or rent homes, as well as for people who are looking to document their place. As an architectural designer, virtual tours come in handy in designing as I have a visual reference of the space. My colleagues, consultants, the clients, and even the future tenants of the space can have a look. A good set of photos will definitely help in terms of capturing the overall look of the space, but the virtual tour lets you travel through the space, making you have better understanding of the space. And today I'll be using Kula to turn your 360 photos into a complete virtual tour quite easily. I'll leave the link to this virtual tour in the description for you to have a look yourself. And today's video is sponsored by Kula. And thank you, Kula, for creating an awesome platform to help us create virtual tours quite easily. My camera of the choice is this one. The official name for this is One RS 1 Inch 360 Edition from Insta360. And since it's a bit of a mouthful, I'll call it One RS. Basically, it's a small 360 camera with one inch sensor on both sides. Its large sensor size does improve the overall image quality and its low light capabilities. I have been liking the 6K resolution of this camera and I've actually covered its capabilities and features in a separate video. So please do check that video out if you have not already. I'll leave both the video and the camera links in the description. And in addition to the camera itself, you'll also need a tripod or preferably a monopod. I'm using Insta360's monopod feet along with three meter long selfie stick. Screw the camera onto the monopod or the tripod of your choice. And you will also need to download Insta360 app on your phone or onto a tablet of your choice. Insta360 app works well on both Android and iOS. I often do this on my iPad as it is nice to be able to preview the image on a much larger screen, but my Android phone will serve the purpose just as well. And if it wasn't for this recording, I'll usually put a pair of earphones or headphones to listen to the favorite tunes of mine whilst taking pictures of the place. Let's take the cap off. You just turn on the camera. It just has a little bit of tune. Once the camera has been detected by the device of your choice, you can preview the image and you are ready to roll. And as a pro tip, I suggest you connect your camera with a device of your choice before heading out to the site. Often the software and the firmware versions need updating and doing that without the comfort of your own Wi-Fi can be a pain. I've actually been there, done that, and learned it the hard way. And once you have arrived at the space that you intend to make the virtual tour of, there are a few things that you want to do to make most out of your trip. First, do a walk around of the space. Having a good understanding of the space is really helpful planning the shots. And whilst at it, prepare the space. You will want to clean up and organize the space to get the space in the best light as possible. And speaking of light, it would also be a good idea to pick up the best time of the day that lights up the space. And I understand that some of the space just may not be possible to get a meaningful amount of daylight, but at least make sure to turn on all the lights possible in the rooms and perhaps replace the light bulbs. And you can't really control weather for that day. In my case, I actually had a rain, therefore it is sort of a heavy overcast. I don't have as much daylight coming into the space, but sometimes you just gotta work through it. And as a little tip, it's helpful to carry around some of the lights with you. I mean, if you can carry around a light lamp, that would be better because it's more suitable for the scene. But in some cases, I've gotten away with little mini lights like these. I've actually placed these inside of a light lamp where the bulb has gone out just to light up the scene. It just seems to do the trick. So it is helpful to have some light in the kit. 
And a couple of additional things to look out for are the doors, mirrors, and personal items. You want to keep most of the doors open so that you kind of see the space beyond it. I say most because some of the doors will block the way when it is opened. But when it needs to be opened, you can use a door stopper. I actually carry that around in my kit as well. And in terms of the camera placement, you want to avoid placing it next to a mirror because you will actually see the camera in the mirror and it will be a bit distracting. And whilst capturing, you want to hide away from the possible angles of the camera. Mind you, it takes picture of 360, therefore you really need to be diligent about hiding away from the camera, otherwise you're going to be captured within the photo and you'll look quite silly. And on the preview window, you can just kind of scroll around to see whether you can see yourself in that corner or not and just duck away as you see yourself. And it wouldn't be so nice to see some of your personal belongings such as my water bottle. So I'll probably tuck it away on a corner behind a door or something like that. And I usually turn the ceiling fans off because I don't want them moving in my scene. They look actually fine stopped. So yeah, I usually stop them too. However, things are somewhat easier in this space because this is a model home that's been prepared and organized and cleaned to be seen by multiple people. So I'm just gonna go around and actually do the shoot and you'll be able to see the glimpse of it. Once you are done shooting, verifying at least a few of the shots on your small device before you leave the site is not a bad idea. Sometimes you may have a speck of dust stuck on the lens, therefore ruining your entire shot. Maybe just check it in the middle of the shoot so that you don't go through the entire site and turns out that you need to reshoot the everything. But in addition, if the time and resource allows, downloading a couple of images onto your laptop to see everything in much better resolution is definitely helpful. As I am back in my studio, I'll use Insta360's studio to process the images. The one inch sensors on the camera seems to make quite a difference when it comes to the quality of the 360 photo. You can often do some global post edits, but Kula also allows some filter and sharpening. Therefore, we can skip the Photoshop part right now and I will be sure to touch on it later. Kula.co is a website where you are going to host all the photos we have taken. It is free to sign up, but if you would like to create a hotspot virtual tours where you can click to move on to different photos, then you will need to sign up for a pro account. Once you got the account set up, let's create the tour. You can simply create tour, add the titles and upload the images, then post them. And once you are here, you can actually click on edit tour. And here you would like to rearrange the photos so that they are arranged in a way that you would like to put them into the hotspot tour. And you can go to tour settings and I like changing this into walk-in fade slash zoom mode and also enable the walkthrough mode so you have sort of a natural transition as if you're walking through space in the shots. Save that and then we can go back to editing all of this by exiting and click on the edit. Once you are there, you'll notice the blue cross, which is basically the point that you will be looking at once you enter this specific photo. So for example, it's gonna prompt me to save it. And once I save it, I look at this dot here on this photo. And then if I go back, I will be looking at over there. However, I would like it to aim somewhere here. So I'll just click on the current and also make that as my snapshot like so. And actually something that I need to do is to put a meaningful description. So this would be the home view. A few things that I would like to do here after saving is sun effect. Perhaps if I want a bit more sun effect on this scene, I can do that. 
but I don't really want to since I think it is bright enough. So let me go ahead and remove that. I can apply some of the filters on here. So X process, cooler, all of these filters are available. Perhaps I'll add a bit of bloom, but I don't want to overdo it. So I want to decrease that and add a bit of HDR toning. It is going to bring up the details in the dark spots and on the very bright spots. However, I don't want to overdo that either and also add a bit of sharpness. Obviously, again, just put in a right amount as you can see and you can apply all of those changes as a batch, meaning apply to all of the photos that I have. However, I rather apply those changes individually in these cases. So I will go ahead and skip that part. And once we are down here, you can add an audio if you would like to or add a zoom settings so that it is set to a specific amount and they are not allowed to go anything further however i don't really need to do that on this specific view so i'll just leave it at where it was and there is a pitch limit meaning you can't look too far up kind of limit but i don't really need to have that either or I can do level correction if the horizon is not on the correct spot, but I don't need to do that. So I'll leave these settings as they were, and we're gonna keep things to somewhat basic. Obviously you can add a specific type of image if you would like to into the scene, or you can add a text. It just added something over here. It's kind of hard to see. So let me just have it on the wall so I can perhaps tag it as entry and set the specific opacity or rotations and such and you'll also notice that once i look around you'll see the text is not static meaning it is kind of turning and zooming around as i look at this so it is quite intuitive i can scale on zoom so that it stays in the same exact size as i zoom but i don't think this is absolutely necessary so i'm just going to delete it and actually add the hotspot once i add the hotspot i can add onto the door itself as it is on the wall but actually my other hotspot is going to be on this floor as this photo's position was taken up there so i'm just going to leave it there and perhaps onto the floor it's kind of hard to see so we can increase the size of it and not make it as transparent and you can also change the rotation but i don't think you need to as it is a circular thing but something you can absolutely do is to change the image there are a few built-in assets that you can change into but i think it is fine as it is i'll leave it at that and perhaps write a name to it so move up obviously it would work better if the icon was smaller so you can see it however i don't think i need to have a text in this case so i'm gonna delete it and put it back where it was and on this drop down i will select go to another post once I do that, I can go ahead and pick the view that I would like to jump onto. Once I save that and close it in the tour mode, if I click on this, I'll jump onto that specific view. So that's how the interaction happens. Let's go back to the edit mode and go back to this shot over here. Instead of doing all of that, the easiest way to do this is actually, I'm gonna delete that and go back to the view and actually drag this image onto the spot and obviously i can change whether i want it to be on floor or wall in this case and also the same applies in terms of the appearance and opacity and such and i'll keep it about this size so i can go to the tour mode and then click on this and i'll jump onto the spot once you pop back into the edit mode obviously you want to change the name of this so this is an entry outside and then you want to reorient so that you are actually looking inside. So current and snapshot. Perhaps I want to make this view slightly brighter and bring up some of the details inside so I can up the HDR tone mapping, but I can just keep it as none as this is more meant to be a transition shot and also bring up some sharpening. And that should be it for this specific view, but I do want to add the next point. So if you move on to the next view without 
clicking on save, it will prompt you if you want to save that. Yes, I want to save. And then I'll go to this view and inside I want to be looking at about here. So again, current snapshot and just repeat the same process that I have been doing. I think the overall tone is a little bit too yellow. So I'm going to go to the cooler filter so that I can just set that to where I would like it to be and then save and then also set the meaningful name. So this is the entry door inside and then save that. And on this view, then you want to drag this and drop it onto the position. And also if you need to back out, you should be able to. So you will just go ahead and drop that onto the position, reduce that. So here on out, we are going to be basically repeating the same thing. And when I need to go to a spot that is beyond a wall or a door, then I usually apply a opacity so that it is understood there is a spot but is beyond that space. And in some case, if you don't want to actually go through the staircase, then you can write something like second floor so that people click on it to go to a next floor. In this case, I want to show the steps, so I will leave it at that. Okay, so once you are done, you can close. And once you close, then you can test out all the spots that you have created. And once you have confirmed everything is to your liking, then you are all done. You simply click on share to get link and share it to the world. I'll leave the link of the finished 360 virtual tour in the description. And I'm sure that you guys would be able to put together a much better virtual tour than me. And I'd love to see them. So please leave those links in the comment. And don't forget to check out other links in the description such as the affiliated link for this camera. And if you have found this 360 virtual tour guide useful, please like this video and consider subscribing to my channel to continue watching these type of videos. Thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you next time. Bye.